and welcome back to week number five where we are learning how to communicate with maps. Making a map is very important especially if it comes to urban and spatial economics. Location matters and we have to now show where certain clusters are happening. We see clusters in different sectors and we see clusters as well in different property price segments. What we're learning here is making a map which is also communicating a certain aspect or a subset of our, of our um, data set. We're creating a heat map or a density map of properties which are uh, having a low yield. First, we are loading the data set. First, we're loading the data set. That means we go into layer, add layer, and we go a delimited text layer because what we're loading is a CSV file. The file is in my downloads folder and it's called Property Data and Tools 2018 number three. And here we have property longitude, latitude. We add that and QGIS represents it automatically on the map. That takes now a minute, that's okay. Close, and voila, we have something like the shape of Melbourne. I always like to have something of a reference system and the reference system might be a base map. And I like to have like something simple. So I use the open street map here on the left side in the X, Y, Z tiles. I just double click and it adds it. The problem with this is, of course, it's on top of our data layer. So we arrange it and put it underneath. There we go. But how can we see something in this big mess? There are too many points on top of each other. And even if we are zooming in, they are still like messy data points. So what we do first is we are selecting properties of a certain type. For this, we go and select features by expression or command F3. In here, you can choose what you're actually looking for. That means you make an expression, which is then making a selection. For example, we go here and have the yield. Um, you can select what kind of attributes you're looking for on the fields and values, scroll down, and at one point you will find yields. Et voila, double click it, and you have that already inside. We're looking for properties which have a yield which is below 2.5. Well, 2%, so therefore we have to change this into 0 0.025. But not only that, so because we are looking at a specific sub-market, we might add something else. So we type and, and an additional kind. What do we look for? Let's say property type of unit. And the unit should be We can always sample that. So by pressing 10 samples or all unique, we are getting the values which are available to us in property type. So we press, we write in like, and then say unit. Okay, and select features. So we press that button here with that orange square or yellow square and what do we have? It's doing its work. It's going through the whole data set and is collecting all of those which are fitting our subscription. We close this window and you see some of those dots are now yellow. We want to have them in a separate layer. So we save this, export, save selected features as a new area. So we save that as a shapefile in our downloads folder or wherever you work or let's call it exactly the same way just point one save okay it's now exporting those and if we're switching off the previous layer we can see that they are somewhere and even already on this representation, we see that they are in a certain location. But what we want to have is something a bit more hmm, representative. So where we go, we go into the properties, 
And instead of having a single symbol for each one of those, we create a heat map. So we can select heat map, press apply. And et voila, you already find that there is something happening. This might be not the right case. For every kind of heat map you create, you have to play around with what kind of radii you take in, into account. So how does that work? You might observe that here on the right side, you have something like a grid. That is a pixel. And it actually calculates how many properties in your data set are within 10 millimeters of your map, are within. And then it gives that value to each one of those pixels. So by adjusting this to like, let's say eight and apply, I get a more refined point. Okay. But this is now covering our whole map, which is not great. We want to have something which is amplifying the map and not covering the map. So in the layer rendering, we can change how the blending mode here, blending mode is not normal, but it might be multiplying. Let's see what that bit does. Et voila. You see, it makes it dark where it happens. This is now not really my favorite color because this is a risk evaluation. So this is where risky properties are with a low yield. So we might change it into reds. Let's see how that works. A uh, little bit better. And we might also think that there's a, like maybe a little bit more would be of interest. Maybe a larger area. Let's see how that works. Oh, that looks already quite well. By pressing OK, we have created a first impression. We now know that there is a Turak in South Yarra and in Maldon East a high concentration of properties with a low yield. All right, but we want to export that in a proper map. A map has also a legend, it has a description, it has a north arrow, and so on. And it also has, and the first and foremost thing, it has a um, correct projection. So we adjust the projection here on the bottom right into GDA 94, MGA zone 55. This is the right projection for Australia, Melbourne, and its surrounding. For every other place in the world, you have to check Check what kind of projection will give you the most accurate, most rectangular um, project, uh, map. If you press OK, it already starts to look much more correct. It has uh, super right angles and so on. Now we export this. How do we do that? On the projects, we can make a new print layout. New print layout, and I call it Melbourne 1. This is basically our canvas, a canvas where we can put all the information we want on it. So what is the first information we want? We want to have a map. So on the left side, you have the elements you want to add and we want to add the map. We snap to the corner and stretch it all the way to the other side. Voila, we have already a map. That's a good start. On the right side, we now see the attributes of that map. And one thing which is always important is the scale. A scale gives you a relationship between the real measurements in real life and what you see on a map. These numbers should be in, in larger, more coherent numbers. So like 100,000, 1 to 50, 1 to 25,000 and so on. So I'm going to change this to 1 to 100,000. Great. I said there needs to be other elements. For example, that you have a scale. What is actually one kilometer? On the left side, you can choose the individual elements. So by pressing on the scale bar, I can now create one. And I create it in an area where there's not much information. It's in the water. We are not really looking at properties in the water, so therefore we can use this area to get a bit more input. And then, you see, we already have a scale which gives us in kilometers. 
We can say we want to have it in different ones. We can change the map units or miles, nautical miles, centimeters, depends on what you need. On the other side, we also want to have something like a information about the layers which are represented. Well, I added this now here, a legend, and it's a bit of a problem because there's now, let me zoom in, there's now, first and foremost, there's like lots of things which are not really important. So here we see the open street map is, is noted here. We first, to change the elements here, we change we unclick the auto update and open street map and remove it with the minus here at the base. You click that and it disappeared as well here on the left. The second thing that happens is that we are having now legend and we have this very weird name for our layer. Maybe we want to change this and say, call it with the little um, scroll and pen. We're going to call it density of properties with less than 2.5% annual yield. Great. That already gives us an indication. And if we are looking for what it is, we might even find that. So, there's, but there's still another layer which is actually switched off. You can see on the left side, it's not visible. So we also remove that one. Remove. But, um, I personally don't like the white background. It depends on what you do. You can just click it off. There you go. And the next thing what you want to do is maybe rearrange it so it's not in the middle of it. Change both of them down. And then you can export it. Here we go. Export as an image or export as a PDF. Comes exactly as the same. And it comes in a better, higher resolution. This was week number five, where you learn how to make a density map out of a subset of your data set. Very powerful tool to show where things are happening, where you need to maybe intervene, where there are opportunities or where there are risks involved in the market. I'm looking forward to some interesting maps. Don't forget to add legends, scales, north and so on, because it makes the map much more readable.